the start of the pandemic, it was really important for government to understand who was being infected and where the infection was occurring. And so it was important not only just to look at the distribution of the virus in real time or near real time, which is what we did in the REACT-1 programme, but also to look at antibody response, which will tell us about who'd been infected since the beginning of the pandemic. So the beauty of antibody testing is that it identifies people who may have been infected but didn't even know they were. It's the antibody that gives immunity to future infections and, and will shape the growth of the epidemic as it goes forwards. REACT stands for the Real-Time Assessment of Community Transmission and it's all about COVID-19 and the virus that causes it. The REACT 2 part of this programme is to look for antibodies in the population to see how many people have been exposed to the virus. REACT 2 was set up extremely quickly. It was a collaboration between Imperial College, between Ipsos Mori and, and the government. Uh, and together we were looking at, first of all, how well the tests work and how people could use them and then work out how we would be delivering that testing at scale. REACT 2 is based on a random sample of adults of England we invite people to take part in the study and if they agree they are sent a so-called lateral flow kit for antibodies to the virus. The REACT2 study planned from the outset to use home use lateral flow assays and at the start nobody knew if they even worked. We had a number of studies to choose the best test that we trusted and actually used the same kind of test kit in the laboratory under very controlled conditions with pipettes instead of drips of blood and checked that we got the same score in the laboratory. And then finally, we used a much more sophisticated test in the laboratory to check that those positive scores on the lateral flow really were true positives according to a much more sophisticated lab test. We're just looking for antibodies in your blood. We had to make sure that people could do this themselves. So we tested it with a small number of people who actually identified some real problems. Sometimes the lancets didn't work, sometimes the kit wasn't very clear. So we worked with them to improve the kit and to improve the instructions particularly about how you should do it and how you would read the result. The public advisory panel have given us feedback every step of the way on our plans, on the way we communicate with people, on the letters of invitation we write, and that has been so valuable. People tell us whether or not they see a line, uh, and we also get a photograph. We can then analyse the data by questionnaire responses that we get from the individuals. When REACT2 started, the main question we had was how many people have been infected? And so when we looked in the population in May 2020, uh, we were able to estimate that there were about 3.4 million people have been infected. Given the extent of the strain on the NHS, I think People hoped that maybe 80% of the population had already had the infection. We saw, you know, less than 7% uh, overall after the first wave um, had actually antibodies in their blood. And then subsequent rounds showed us that that was actually decreasing over time since infection. So there was some, some waning going on of antibody response, which was an important finding. We've shown clearly the unequal burden of disease and how it's fallen on different sectors of the population. We showed that people who lived in deprived areas, people who had jobs where they couldn't work from home, particularly people from black and Asian and minority they ethnic backgrounds were particularly hard hit. It wasn't just that those people were getting more ill or more likely to die, it was they were more likely to be infected. More recently we've been looking at the effect of vaccination on antibody response. After two doses of either the AstraZeneca or the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine, we get a very, very good response and a higher response if people have previously been infected. As population immunity began to build, you could see the impact of that and also see when population immunity began to wane. And so there were several warning signals that came up during REACT2 that were instrumental in governments having, uh, being able to make decisions. It's been amazingly inspiring to work on the REACT2 study. Um, I think it's quite rare for a, someone working on their PhD to see the work that they've done feed so directly into public health efforts. I think REACT2 has been an important contribution to understanding the epidemic, how immune responses have changed over time and what that might mean for protection going into to further phases of infection. To get that number of people to actually respond and give information I think it's a great example of the power of numbers and the power of 
individuals being able to contribute to science and to research.